Hey everyone, it's Will. Today is the last day of South by Southwest Music Festival, and I hope I don't get cut off today, but it's Coffee with Will, and the topic is, it's a miracle that any great art, or maybe I should say it's a miracle that any art ever comes into existence. I'm reminded of the quote by John Lennon, life is what happy happens when you're busy making other plans, right? As I drive to pick up my daughter today through ridiculous traffic, I wonder, hey Morris, how's it going? Shouldn't look at the phone. <laughs> As I drive, you think about times past, like I talked about Dvorak coming over in 1895 by invitation of the National Conservatory, came to the United States, he was a busy guy. He was helping set up a classical music conservatory. He had students, but he still found time to write the New World Symphony because he was so inspired by the indigenous music of America, not only Negro spirituals, but the Native American music. He was so inspired by that. So he still found time in the cracks of his life to create great art that has endured, that has lived on past his life. How great is that? But if you think about it, anybody in the middle of the night uh, to make this art and to get yourself into that place, that place that this famous jazz pianist, I can't remember, he calls The Space. Morris, do you remember that? The name of the pianist who, who does the Effortless Mastery course? He calls it The Space. That, you be, that basically your life itself and be able to find that space and get to that space where you can create the little teeny bits of art that you have time to create. That is unless you decide you want to be a hermit and live alone and not have relationships and then create the art that way. But uh, I was just reflecting over the last year and I'm coming up almost nine months after. And a lot of times it's not a matter of like be having the inspiration. I put down strings. It's an original piece of music. Have I done anything with it yet? No, it's sitting on a hard drive. Simply because there are so many other things that are more important in this current life, in the now, in the right current now, that that music, it's possible that it may never get out there, but it is captured, it's on a hard drive. And not only that, but I have probably a hundred shows with amazing artists like Eliza Gilkes and Slay Cleaves, uh, John D. Graham, Jimmy Dale Gilmore, sitting on hard drives that would people would love to hear. Those fans would love to hear those strings attached. They've been sitting on hard drives in a box in my trailer, protected, for up to 15 years, just sitting there waiting to be released. But it's all a matter of time, and, you know, if I had an assistant who could go through there and mix all that stuff, if I had money, I could release all that. But right now, it's just a part of the ar strings attached archive that's just sitting there. It's not, do I have the ability or even the, the creative wherewithal, it's there just isn't enough time. So, and I think there's a 
a, a kind of acceptance and a kind of freedom in, in, in accepting that. As you get older, as you re go past your middle age, your beginning middle age, you realize, and you let go. You know, when you're young, you're like, oh, I'm gonna release all this music. I have all this amazing stuff. Like in my case, I have so much, so much of it recorded. I have probably a hundred, like I said, a hundred recordings with amazing uh, world famous singer songwriters, Sean Colvin, Willie Nelson, and it's just sitting on a hard drive. And I used to think, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so amazing. I'm gonna get interns and we're gonna release all this and people are gonna love it and it's amazing, oh my gosh. You know, what I ended up doing is I ended up creating this world where I bypassed my original goal and dream as a young musician to be releasing my old music and I became known as the person who supports others, who supports Eliza Gilkison, who supports Sean Colvin. So people always ask me like, who are you playing with? What's the theme of the show? And so <laughs> I have all this music, amazing arrangements that I've put my heart and soul into that's just sitting in envelopes. So I've just, I've just let go, you know, like I'm still open to the idea of releasing all this music. But, but life gets in the way. Life is happening while you're making other plans. Exactly what John Lennon says. That is exactly what happens. And like how important is that stuff anyway, right? Tina Marsh of the Creative Opportunity Orchestra, who is no longer of this earth, was a great friend of mine. She told me when I was having thoughts about, you know, whether I wanted to have children or not, that children would be Having children would be more important than any work of art that I could ever create and will have more importance in reverberating out to human beings in the world than any work of art that I could ever create. And I'm saying this while I go pick up Coralina. And I think it goes beyond that. I think being there for your community, your tribe, your friends, people that, that need you could be more is, is more important than any art, right? What do you think? Do you think that's true? I'd like to know your opinion on that. Is that more important? I mean, I, I'm i grateful that Beethoven created the works of art that he did. I know they were, they were created out of great struggle. And in some cases, some of the art that is left for us to enjoy that impacts our lives, that inspires us eternally, that inspires human beings, as long as it's being recorded and played again, music of Beethoven, the music of Brahms. Brahms was hated by so many of his fellow composers I just learned recently. <laughs> but I'm grateful, I'm affected, that music has changed my life. I don't know those human beings, but in a way, they're, the blueprint of their souls carries on through their music. And of course, there are so many others we'll never know because their music wasn't didn't make it into the popular classical music or you know, wasn't carried on by orchestras. In any case, what do you think? I'm curious. I, you know, I think we should still do it anything. I think, uh, anyway, I think we st should still find time in the cracks to create our art and find that space. And is this a, is this a problem of middle age too? The forgetting, there's so many names that I've acquired and I, I can remember effortless mastery but it's on the tip of my tongue, the art, the pianist. Ah, <laughs> the pianist's name who wrote Effortless Mastery. I want to tell you about that. Look it up, Google Effortless Mastery, comment below, let me know. Because his whole deal, his whole teaching, his whole, his whole life is dedicated to helping artists develop a practice of finding their way to the space. And the space is this place of non-judgment it's this place of where you watch your hands play the music, of where you tap into the antenna, the antenna of creativity, and you just capture the song rather than you make the song happen or you struggle to find the song, but you, 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 you receive the song or you receive the music. And for me, it's been a combination of both. It's never been just all one thing. It's been receiving the song, but also the craftsman's the craftsmanship is also important. And working the song and working the music. It's been a combination of crossroads of those two ideas creating music for me. But life happens and you 
find yourself with things on a hard drive and wondering when you're going to find the time to bring to life music that you put on a hard drive months, years ago. So there are my thoughts for the day. Coffee with Will on whatever day it is, uh, Sunday, South by Southwest, driving down I-35, parking lot, enjoying your company, because I know there's a few of you there. I'm going to glance down. Pam and Tom, they're still watching. It's a radical, amazing, rare act that any art, I'll even say great art, life-changing art, ever gets created, ever, because life happens, and we should be thankful that that artist found the cracks in their life to put it down so that we all could enjoy it for generations. Thank you, Beethoven. Thank you, Mozart. Thank you, Brahms. And I, I don't have any... I don't have a goal to go down in history as a great artist, but I sure do enjoy the process of finding and receiving and chiseling those songs and melodies that were not before, that before were just a blank piece of space staring at me. I, I really enjoy the process. Matter of fact, I feel more alive. I feel connected to the universe. And what does that give me? That that gives me the ability to be there. The happier I am, the more I can be available of service to my friends and my family. So I think it's important as artists or as human beings, we're all artists, by the way, to find our zone, to find our that thing, that activity that we're so in love with, that we are in the flow and we feel connected to the world. When we have that, we're more available. We're, we're alive. We're more available to our the people that need us. That's what I'm trying to say. We're more available to go do things like that I do with Strings Attached Cares. And then when we do those things, we it adds to our aliveness and we just, we just feel great. We just feel so good. I'm feeling it right now. So... I love it. I love I love being a service to myself and then taking that to the next level and being of service to others. And it's there's sort of this feeling of it never being satiated. You know what I mean? There's this feeling of never getting to the end of that because there are there's so many humans out there that need our help. And when we find that area that that we really vibrate in, for me it's music. It really brings you, me alive. And we find that we that we have an effect on others. We just want to go out and take that vibrancy and that that joy. And I'm not just saying playing music for others. I'm saying, yeah, Kenny Werner. I'm not saying that I need to take my music to everybody. I'm saying, sure, I love doing that. But the energy, the the sort of the the overabundance of energy that I get makes me want to be available to other humans, whether that's you know going to their house and helping them with something, whether that's helping my daughter with something that has nothing to do with music. Like it could just be the most menial task ever. It could be like cleaning out my trailer <laughs> like I did the other day, which was a very meditative activity, knowing that then I can make the trailer available for somebody that needs that space. You know, if my daughter needs to come over and spend the night, I have a clean trailer to share, you know, menial activities scrubbing the floors of the bathroom so that my mom, when she comes home from her surgery, feels comfortable in the house. That feels so great. You know, see where I'm going with this? When you have that overabundance of energy, you just it's an unsatiable kind of feeling of wanting to get out there to the world and help others. And the more that you can wipe your slate clean, right? The more that you can wipe your slate clean from all those little things that whittle you down. You know what I mean? All those little computer tasks, all those things that you signed up for, or you signed away time, and you can generate or you can you could turn the ship of your life more towards minimalism the more that you're available to help others and feel this really incredible joy. Yep, uh, guys. Everybody watching, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, let me know where I can bring my energy to you. 
where, what places can we bring Strings Attached Cares? And you can read all about it at stringsattachedcares.org. I also put a link in this description where you can get five free songs from Karen and Will in advance of a Celtic album that we're working on. Real excited. That got pushed to the side as well until another two weeks go by. When we're uh, helping out mom with her rec recuperating in our home and we're, uh, we're gonna finish that up as soon as we get some time. Matter of fact, my studio is in my mom's condo, ready to go. So if you're interested in the Celtic project I'm working on, be sure to sign up on the link that is in this description. If you have a place that you would think would benefit from the Strings Attached Cares project, again, you can read all about it at stringsattachedcares.org. See a little video there which shows what we do, going into nursing homes, going to care centers, going to schools. It's all there in the video. It shows you what we do. Please check that video out, stringsattachedcares.org. Let us know where you think we could go. We have money to spend to do this. And we have amazing musicians that are present and vibrant that will connect more than just play music. And you'll see it on the video. You'll see some of that presence I'm talking about. So uh, thanks for watching the video. And it would mean a lot to me. It would really, really mean to the world to me. It would mean the world to me if you would comment or do one of the things I mentioned in the video, one of the calls to action, which are go to the link in the description or check out Strings Attached Cares, make a donation, or suggest a place where we could make a difference. Those two things would really mean a lot to me. Okay? What do you say? Give me some hearts and likes if that sounds great. Take care, everybody.